Hi, I'm Harvey Hubble, and you're listening to Harvey Hubble's Show and Tell. For those of you who don't know, we just recently finished a documentary called Hopeville, and it's about the reading crisis in America and how to fix it. When we finished the movie, we knew we needed some sort of call to action. It's not just a movie. It's a movement. It's a movement. So that's why we created the Advocacy Toolkit. Our producer, Amy, here is going to show us how it all works. So it's really easy. It's just advocacytoolkit.com. This site is, you know, currently under construction. We're adding to it weekly and we'll continue to add to it. So the great thing about the Advocacy Toolkit is that it's all the extra stuff from the filming that you've done for Hopeville and, um, you know, some of your other films. After we made the movie, we wanted to make the Advocacy Toolkit to help out parents, educators, any kind of decision makers so they can look at this and it tells what's happening in the literacy crisis in our nation from whatever state you're in. Part of our Advocacy Toolkit is a state resource guide. So you can see here that we have the United States of America all in green. Do you want to pick a state, Harvey? Let's take a look at Massachusetts. All right, so we're gonna head over to Mass. You can click the state or the icon. So we have individual state pages. We have a little bit of information about what's going on in terms of literacy and advocating for you know increased literacy rates. On the left here, we have the average reading levels in Massachusetts. So this is you know state specific. So every page that you go to will have the specific state demographics and numbers from the most recent uh, NAEP exam. And then you can also see their score gaps on the right-hand side. Now, this part, once we start seeing these pictures, this is a great example of how things are going to keep growing. So we have a couple people here. Let's take a look at Barbara Wilson. Sure, Harvey. So as you can see, everyone has their own profile page with a description of who they are, a link to their website, and we're even adding profile videos to each page. Let's watch your video. Hi, I'm Barbara Wilson, president and co-founder of Wilson Language Training with my husband, Ed. It's located in Oxford, Massachusetts, but we work with school districts throughout the country. Together, we founded Wilson Language Training over 30 years ago. So for more than three decades, we have worked with schools consulting and providing professional learning. That's great. So they're master educators, they're researchers, and they sit down and these are the podcasts. So right now we have placeholders, but eventually there'll be an hour long conversation with you know, these experts uh, in the field. And this will, this will be constantly growing. And we have four in Massachusetts right now. I envision in the future, there could be, you know, twice that many, three times, four times that many. Absolutely. Uh, and that happens in all the states that happens in Texas, that happens in California, Arkansas, Arizona, Alaska. So that's like the beauty of this. And that's why we're really proud of how we're bringing this all together. The Massachusetts evidence-based organizations, they're all listed right here. If you're a decision maker, and that could be a school superintendent, a parent, I mean, you know, parents are decision makers, an elected official, board of education, you're going to be able to come here and get the information that you need and then continue on on your own personal journey. We also have, I don't know if this is the right time to go in here, but, but we, oh yeah, we, this is perfect because, you know, we have white papers. So there's new science happening all the time. Instead of having white papers that are filed away in a drawer someplace, now moms, dads, teachers, everybody can read the latest science. And they can get involved and they can cross-reference and they can talk to some of the same people who wrote the papers. So speaking of advocacy, Harvey, we have a whole slew of tools here that help you learn how to advocate for change. Of course, the number one thing I would suggest someone to do when they're learning about the science of reading and the literacy crisis is watch Hopeville. You can check it out on hopevillefilm.com and you can find your way to the advocacy toolkit from there, which is advocacytoolkit.com. In addition to tools for individuals, we have tools for organizations. So we made a film about the literacy crisis in the United States. There's over 330 million Americans. That's 330 million different kind of problems because we all learn differently and we're all been handed a, a, a different deck. So as filmmakers, we struggle with who is our audience? Well, our audience is very broad. We want to make sure that when we have a call to action right at the end of this film, get involved with the, the advocacy toolkit. 
And that's where you take over. If you want to get involved and you want to uh, work on this, solve this problem or work on this problem, um, it's where can you get in and who is your resources? And that's why we, we built this, to be able to help out the individual advocate. And if you're trying to help somebody read your kid or, or somebody in your classroom or somebody in your, your district, you're an advocate. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can be an advocate. And I think this toolkit's a really good, you know, show of that. You can, you know, use this template. You can download the template letter right from the website and right to your decision makers in your area, your politicians, your superintendents, your board of ed. So advocacy is for everybody. And the great thing is that nobody's alone. So we also have a number of groups that are across the country from the International Dyslexia Association to the 95% group decoding dyslexia. Um, and all of these groups are somehow, shape, way, or form involved in helping the illiteracy crisis that's happening right now. So there's organizations already in place, likely having meetings, likely having conferences or summits or some sort of get together where you can meet folks in your area that are very well versed in what's happening, you know, specifically to your, your state or your district every school district is different just the way we're all wired differently there's no overarching you know curriculum in the united states so we're everything is is individualized to a district or school and and these organizations i want to you say specifically decoding dyslexia you know they're across the country and they're individual to each state and they've done huge work that's in passing parent, laws that's a parent advocacy group you know we're one click away from from finding other people who are working on the same solution the same problem and realizing this is something that we can do better in and why can we do better because the scientists are working on it and they've been studying this and all the papers and the information is right here you've known that for a while now you you know that we can teach everybody we can reach what 95 percent of, of all students and i really you know commend the work that you've done and the team has done in making these resources available to everyone you've really um you know you've been following the literacy crisis for as long as i've known you and we're friends with a lot of <laughs> we're friends with a lot of neuroscientists and master educators yeah absolutely i think that's a great um segue into video resources so i love that these videos are broken down into categories and believe you me this is just the beginning so we have you know six categories ranging from evidence-based practices to early intervention tips for parental involvement and then also teacher training hopeville just got finished pretty recently so we've been working on that now all the extra behind the scenes other footage that didn't make it into the film are going to live on this site to try to tell this story and put it into an, an 80 minute story there's so much of it that's going on and when it affects 330 million people um there's really 330 million stories on literacy so again this is the video library and as you'll be able to see we have some really you know impressive names of researchers like dr mark seidenberg uh dr margie gillis you know it's a really great start and it, like we had said before we'll be uploading videos at least weekly you know, you can join our mailing list down at the bottom, get in contact with us, and then make a connection and share a resource that maybe not be on here already. Okay, so here's what I really love about the video library. Over here, why the policymakers are important, how we can all work together to fix the reading crisis in America. I get oh, ben. Go, to, go to Ben. Or Tracy. Go to Dr. Ben Powers. Sure. The problem with textbook companies. Oh. The problems we have in this country is that a lot of decisions are driven by textbook manufacturers. There's a huge moral hazard. You know, who are the people that create the standardized tests? Who are the people that create the materials that get in front of our kids? Who ultimately are really having a say in how we train teachers and how we provide professional development to teachers, right? And all of them have, you know, some type of skin in the game in terms of, you know, a financial outcome. Mm. Wow. It's a big problem. Let's go watch another one. Let's see what. Can we watch Tracy? Why policymakers are important. Yep. Uh, makers need to know what's happening because they're the ones that can change the laws. Right now, there's so many kids still struggling in school, not knowing what this is. Struggling, their parents are fighting for them to try to get the proper resources. And some of the teachers want to help 
but their hands are tied because they may not know how they're not trained to help a child with dyslexia. I love this. This is great. Absolutely. We need all kids to be reading, not just, you know, the ones with extra resources or it, it shouldn't matter. Um, and that's, you know, the other reason for the podcast, we really wanted to continue to make this information accessible to as many people as possible. There's so many folks affected. So again, this is our podcast page. It is all coming soon because while well, you're watching it right now. So it's yep. constantly growing. So each time you come back to it, you can just tune into here all the time and it's going to constantly be growing. Part of what we're doing is we're traveling around the country. Um, you know, we'll do the longer podcasts before we get, get into certain towns. Uh, but they're going to live here after that. And we'll just keep growing and getting more of a base of knowledge. Hope feels more than a, a movie. It's a movement. It is a film. It's a toolkit. It's a podcast. It is, it's change coming. We believe that we can do better. We have to do better. We have to do better for our nation. We have to do better for our kids. We have to do better for ourselves. Yeah, so, you know, that's why we made the toolkit. You know, there is just so in, so much information out there, good information, bad information, and a lot of folks don't really know what's what. And you've been, you know, talking to brain scientists, interviewing neuroscientists and educators for decades now. That's really, I think, the important piece of the toolkit is getting the, you know, continuing to get the research out of the laboratories and into the classroom where it can be put into implementation to really continue to help the literacy crisis. But definitely, you know, stay tuned on the toolkit for upcoming podcasts and uh, additional white pages. The science never stops. So we're going to keep uploading and keep adding to it as much as, as much as and often as we need to. Yeah, the information comes from the from the laboratories and the white papers, and now it's finally going into the laymen. It's finally going into uh, the people who need it the most, the people who are educating our children and um, and the people who are raising our children. Amy, thank you for your time on on this today and all of your hard work and making this happen. And thank the whole t entire team for this. But this is why it's so important for us to all work together and and stay connected on the science that's constantly changing around us and listening to every individual story okay so i'm going to make you a deal please continue listening to these podcasts and we'll continue to go off and get stories from the people who are making a difference mm -hmm.